How's it going, everyone? My name is Charlie. This is my Great Dane puppy, Roxy. She's going on five months old, and the title of this video is not clickbait. This past Saturday, Roxy was attacked by two full-grown German Shepherds, and this is going to be a real-world, first-hand account of every dog owner's nightmare. And I'm going to be as open and honest, transparent about it as possible, in hopes to give you tools to deter such a situation from ever happening with you and your dog, or just to have a game plan should the worst ever happen, which I hope that it doesn't. But Roxy is okay. She took no physical harm, but just as I've been discussing in previous videos, she's at such an impressionable age that even though she didn't take physical harm, my fear is, you know, the psychological or the trauma that might have taken place from such an event. So this past Saturday, it's 60 degrees in Georgia, beautiful day, and I think that this would be a great time to take Roxy to a dog park because in the past, whenever we've gone to a dog park, we've actually been the only people there. And so we arrive at the dog park and I see inside, and if you've never been to one, you know, they're fenced areas because dogs are in there off leash typically. And I see there's two German Shepherds running around inside. And I approach the owner who's sitting on a bench inside the, the park and I ask, you know, do your dogs play nice with other dogs? Or are they a bit rougher or almost aggressive? And he said, well, that one is aggressive, especially if you have a female, which of course Roxy is. But on top of that, I wasn't even looking at which dog he was pointing to because as soon as I heard that one of them was remotely aggressive, I was like, well, I'm not bringing Roxy in there. And in my mind, I'm thinking, and you shouldn't be bringing aggressive, potential, or even potentially aggressive dogs to a dog park, period. Like, what if I didn't ask and I just brought my dog in here? So, Roxy's still in the car at this point, so I go and I grab Roxy, and there's a soccer field nearby, and I'm like, we'll, you know, get some energy out on this field, play around a little bit, and then we'll just go for a walk instead of, you know, like playing in the dog park. And so Roxy and I are now, you know, playing on this soccer field and all of a sudden I hear something behind me and I turn and I see one of the German Shepherds and when the dog is about 10 feet away, this dog darts in and starts growling and then starts snapping at Roxy's neck and Roxy starts crying immediately and running away. And in my pre one of my previous videos, I do showcase what it looks like when dogs are playing. And I know that if you're not used to being around dogs, you can think how dogs play looks violent or aggressive, but it's not. And if you are a dog owner or been around dogs, you can definitively see the difference when there's aggression versus just playing. And so now I am yelling and pushing and trying to get this dog away from my dog. And I look up expecting to see the owner running over. But when I look up, I see the second German Shepherd who is also now trying to attack Roxy. And the owner is still inside the dog park and I hear him yell, they got out of the fence. And he is not running, he is not jogging, and he is not trotting, he is walking. And he is yelling commands for his dogs to stop or to come back and they're not listening at all. And now I am fighting off two German Shepherds and trying to get them away from my dog. I have nothing on my person other than my body that I can use to defend my dog or break up a dog fight. Roxy doesn't have a chance and she's not trying to fight at all. She is just crying and running while I am fighting off these dogs until I am able to pick up Roxy and make a break for my car. And even as I'm carrying Roxy and running to the car, they are still jumping and snapping at Roxy. And I open the back seat, we jump in there, I shut the door, and I'm trying to console Roxy while checking her over to see if she's injured. And miraculously, Roxy is not bleeding, she has no marks, she is com entirely uninjured. How? I, d I have no idea how, from how violent and aggressive this whole situation was. Even though, like, this whole incident from the first German Shepherd arriving, to us getting to the car is like under 30 seconds, you know, like this isn't a long fight or anything. But still, there was plenty of opportunity for Roxy to get hurt in this.
but I, again, like I'm checking her over thoroughly. I'm consoling her. She's not injured because I know if she's injured, I need to call 911 or animal control. I'm not sure which at this point. Like, and I'm also fuming angry with this other owner who had no sense of urgency about what's happening. And once I clear and see that she's not injured is when I finally see that he has got his dogs in the back of his pickup truck. They're not in crates. They're not on any leash or anything. They're just sitting back there. And he approaches me and he says, they scared her pretty bad, didn't they? And I started to physically shake from how angry I was at this other person. And I was honestly scared what I was going to do to this man who was in his 40s or 50s. And at that point, I determined I only have one of two options. There's the zero option where Roxy's uninjured, we're just going to leave, or 100, which is most likely a physical altercation based on how angry I am about this whole, this whole situation, how he brought potentially aggressive or aggressive dogs to a dog park, had them off leash, wasn't able to restrain or control them in any way. They got out of the fence and, you know, he wasn't helpful in the situation at all. Like it could have gone so bad and so much worse. And again, there's the potential traumatic effects that this can have on such a young puppy when socialization is so important at this age. And it actually has the potential to cause a dog that's been through this to either be very scared around other dogs or to even be violent with other dogs. So now I have to especially put forth even more effort in socialization in order to, you know, to correct any negative side effects that might have occurred from this situation. But I'm fuming. I'm so angry. I'm not thinking clearly. Roxy's okay. I'm okay, you know, now that the dust had settled a little bit and I ensured Roxy was okay, I was like, did I get hurt? Because these are scary dogs to have be violent. And so we just, we just left. And I'm venting to people on the phone. I'm calling my other, you know, like dog owners. I call my breeder. I call, you know, like different people trying to get input on, you know, what I should have done differently. I ended up calling animal control to be like, hey, what do you do in this situation? And she essentially, the operator told me that I would want to get this person's first name, last name, his phone number. And even though she didn't recommend this, I would probably try and get this person's license plate because there's also a chance that if they're in trouble or their dogs are in trouble, they might not give you their real information. But essentially, I was still able to make a report even though I didn't have maybe the most critical parts of information, I still was able to make a report with animal control based on what park I was at, where this happened, a description of the dogs, because one of them was a unique color for German Shepherds to be. And who's to say, you know, maybe down the road, that information ends up being helpful in some way. I say all this and encourage you all to be prepared have animal, you look up what your animal control's phone number is, have that saved in your phone. So if you get in a crisis, you're not fumbling on Google to try and look it up. You know, you can call 911. Animal control told me that you can do that if, you know, in this kind of situation as well. So in the past, I've discussed some of the accessories I always take with me when I go out with Roxy, whether that be food and water bowls, treats, waste bags, whatever it may be. But I realized I did not have anything to potentially de-escalate an aggressive situation or to deter a potentially aggressive dog. And so when I was doing my research and I was looking on AKC to what, see what they recommend, they recommend things like making a really loud noise, like an air horn is one of the accessories they mention. Or, you know, if you have water to dump on the dog's head, it would have to be a, probably a decent amount of water, but that's another solution. Or if you have a large blanket or a large coat that you can throw on a dog. But I'm really looking for something that is very practical, something that, you know, I might not just be able to have an air horn with me everywhere that I go, but one of the options that they did recommend and that I did see on their site is this spray shield. Very similar looking to pepper spray, has the same kind of safety that pepper spray does on the back. It can go right on 
right on a belt loop. It can go in a pocket and a purse. Again, very portable. You can think of it almost like a compressed air that doesn't have any residue to it because AKC actually recommends that you can essentially spray this in a dog's face and it's not going to cause harm to the dog. But the scent combined with the sound and the spray itself is going to scare the dog, break up or de deter a semi, you know, aggressive or violent situation. So now, now that is going with me everywhere. Even if I never have to use it, the peace of mind that comes with that 16 or $17 to me is well worth it. So thanks for stopping by everyone. I hope this video equips you to be as prepared as possible so that you have a game plan and are prepared to keep your loved one safe. So stay safe everyone and thanks for rocking with us. We'll see you next time.